Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode. And if you're new around here, welcome to my film photography channel. I upload new episodes every whenever I feel like it. Did you purchase a red filter and now you're like, what the hell do I do with this thing? Chances are probably no, because I doubt that's happened to anyone ever, but we're gonna pretend like that's the case anyway, just for this video. So as you may or may not know, you can use color filters on black and white film to drastically alter the look of your shot. I've always wanted to give the red filter look a try, so here I am talking to an inanimate object about it. For this experiment, I shot with my Canon AE-1, a Tiffin 25A red filter, and shot a roll of Ilford HP-5, followed by a roll of Street Candy. Both films are panchromatic films, which means that they register all colors on the visible light spectrum, and then they convert those colors to black and white. Similar to how your body converts spaghetti to sh By adding a red filter, we're filtering out certain colors to make them render a bit brighter, if you want to think about it like that. So reds, oranges, and yellows will render brighter tones as they're able to pass through the red filter quite easily. Like Han did when he got through the Empire's security at the beginning of Solo, a Star Wars story. On the other side of the spectrum, literally, the red filter will clash with complementary colors. So blues, greens, and purples are the general targets here. Those colors will render a bit darker as they're unable to pass through the red filter as easily. Like how Kira didn't get through the Empire's security at the beginning of Solo, a Star Wars story. I love that movie. But enough about modern cinematic masterpieces, let's hit the pandemic stricken streets to see if this filter thing actually works. Uh, quick disclaimer, a lot of these shots are just tests for the comparison. In fact, a lot of them can be used as a good lesson on how not to do composition and framing. So for this comparison, I shot every shot on a tripod. One shot with no filter and then one shot with a red filter taken only seconds apart from one another. I say that because some of these shots will look like there's huge lighting differences between them, but I swear it's just the filter working its magic. Additionally, these are just standard scans. I fought off every urge in my body to edit them in any way whatsoever so that you can have the purest form of comparison. Because everybody always wants the purest form of everything, like pure air, water, cocaine. This stop sign shot is not only the most well-framed photo in this entire video, that's right, it's all downhill from here, but it's also a good shot to compare, contrast, and reflect upon. As you can see, when the red filter was applied, the light blue sky darkened a bit, and the sunlight hitting the building got brighter. Even the light hitting the mountains in the back got more definition, which is something my personal trainer tells me I need more of every time I take off my shirt. Oh, Caleb texted you. This shot is interesting because the flowers here are redder than Clifford the Big Red Dog's ass. So the red filter takes them and turns them almost white. We see the same sort of renderings happening on the background too, where the sky gets darker and the evening lighting gets brighter. Now with the Tiffin 25A red filter, or any similar filters, the harsh red actually cuts out quite a bit of light. According to Hoya's website, you'll need to adjust your exposure by adding three stops of light, supposedly. So for the test, I exposed the first photo with no filter, and then I added three stops of light, as well as the red filter, for the second shot. Another example of how reds and oranges react is here with this orange cone. With the red filter applied, it almost looks like the cone got inverted in Photoshop. So I shot this shitty photo of a red flower to really see the effect in action, and boy did it deliver. 
The red flower turned glowy white with the filter on. But hey, at least it stands out, right? Like how I try to stand out on job applications by listing my hobby as an aspiring clown. Not only does that trick never work, and I seem to get in a lot of trouble when I randomly show up to baby showers, but now I think I'm on some sort of list. Here's everyone's favorite swimming pool, but from a different angle. See guys, I don't just take the same photo of this damn pool all the time. I migrated to the other side because I'm evolving as a photographer. This shot sucks though, so. Again with this comparison, we see the uh, sunlight getting brighter and the sky getting a bit dimmer. Additionally, with the red filter on, this brick building here got brighter because bricks are red. In other stupidly obvious observations, birds can fly. I think in this comparison, the red filter actually made the shot a lot better. The orange flowers on the birds of paradise, as well as the leaves on the ground, became brighter and more apparent. If you squint your eyes and you believe extra hard, you can also see the sunlight getting brighter on the tree in the background. Deciding to further test out how different colors render, I swapped out the HP5 with street candy and shot some lemons. Don't get too excited though, they're just normal lemons, not those pills from Wolf of Wall Street. So yeah, huge difference in lighting here. I'm wondering if it's because I was using an LED lamp as the main source of light. But after considering the subject, I think it's just because the red filter turns yellow objects really bright. This portrait shot of Monica also has a huge lighting difference. It may be because she's standing in the sunlight, but I'm starting to think maybe the red filter doesn't need a full three stops of light to get the job done. That may just be my personal conspiracy theory though. Further testing is required. I did like how the red filter kind of boosted the skin tones and made them a lot brighter. That might be an interesting style to explore for portraits. Though if you're shooting someone, or something with a bad rash, then maybe skip the red filter as it's only going to highlight the rash. Yeah, this is a pretty cool comparison. The red filter made the red BMW a whole hell of a lot brighter. So are the photos with the red filter better? Doesn't matter. After all, the universe doesn't give a shit about you or anything you do. Okay, I guess it depends on your taste. I think it actually made a lot of the shots a lot more interesting, especially when it pimps out that orange evening light. Though I'd say one of the downsides is every time a brick building was in the shot, it kind of made the shot look kind of whack in my opinion. So yeah, I didn't get to do any comparisons on any fun things, mostly just a lot of bull 
it around the neighborhood. I imagine the red filter would be perfect for landscape photography where the blue skies get darkened down a bit and become a little more soul crushing, which is something you probably want in your landscape photos. I don't know how the red filter would perform in overcast weather because frankly, I live in Los Angeles where the blazing sun scorches everything all day, every day. And then we pay really high rent prices for it. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to some of you and I hope you have a great rest of your week and rest of your life while we're at it. Peace.